It's here. Hey everyone, my name is Chris and thanks for coming to my channel. In this video, I want to give you my first impressions of the new iPad Pro Magic Keyboard. So I do want to make a few of these videos just to make sure I cover different topics appropriately. So this is going to be my first impressions video. I also want to make a more in-depth review as I get more time with the keyboard. And I also want to do a comparison video between the new keyboard and the old keyboard. Uh, I think both of them are still great products with some flaws and depending on what it is you're trying to do, you might still be better off getting this one instead of this keyboard, but we'll talk about that later. So the first impression that you have with this keyboard is right when it gets delivered, you pick it up, it's heavy. It's uh, definitely heavier than the prior version, um, but it's not as heavy as I thought it would be. A lot of the reviews that I saw early on said that the weight was significant. Uh, yeah, it's heavier, but it's not that big of a deal for me. Um, so it's just something to consider. Yes, it's heavier. Is it a deal breaker? Not for me. The other thing that I like about this keyboard is just how easy it works. Uh, because it's using the smart connector, you really just need to pop in your iPad and you're good to go. You can start typing away. The trackpad just works. Uh, I definitely love this as opposed to other Bluetooth keyboards because you have to deal with the whole Bluetooth connections and sometimes that it's not working like it should. So uh, things like this and even the Logitech keyboards that use that smart connector just make it a lot easier to start using the thing. So really appreciate that. Another thing that I noticed is that it's very stiff, very sturdy, um, which you can equate to a good build quality, of course, um, but it's just very rigid. So whenever you're opening the iPad, everything just has its very slick movements and um, yeah, for a product that costs $300, I, I would expect something with this build quality. Now, before we get into flaws, uh, I do want to point those out, but I think those are better off in a dedicated review after I've had it. But the first thing I notice is that since I am using the 11 inch keyboard, whenever I put the iPad uh, fully tilted towards me to where it can't go any further back, I did notice that once I started typing, my fingers were touching the iPad, which is not a big deal. If I move this just a little bit back, I don't have that issue anymore, but it's, it's just the first thing I noticed. And if somebody is using the 11 inch iPad and they have lar larger hands than I do, then uh, it's definitely something that they're going to notice whenever they're using the iPad. So right away, the first thing that I used this for was to type. Uh, I've been looking forward to the new keyboard that's on here. Uh, I haven't really typed a lot on the new MacBook keyboards. I know it's a little similar to those scissor switch keyboards, but I just haven't had a chance to use them. So the first thing I did was go to uh, my typing test, speed test website of choice, and I did a typing test. It's what I do during my spare time. Don't judge. Um, and yeah, after doing it, like it's really comfortable. The keyboard is a little bit more compact, but it's something you can get used to. It's not, um, one second. Yeah, I'll do that later. Yep, the keyboard is compact, of course. It's not as wide as the 12.9 inch, but I think it's very doable and it's a very good size for, uh, for this iPad. The trackpad, the trackpad, is something that I didn't think I would appreciate as much as I do. So I'm not a, really a trackpad person. I prefer my Logitech MX3 mouse or my MX Anywhere mouse. I really like the clicky feeling. I like having control whenever I'm using the mouse. But for some reason on the iPad, the trackpad just feels more natural and it feels like it goes. I've used my mouse on my iPad as well. And yeah, it's cool to have a mouse to right click, to, I mean, have that typical mouse experience, but it just hasn't been able to beat the touch from the trackpad. And I just, I didn't realize how much I'd be using gestures, like even from the get-go. Uh, I'm using gestures to switch between apps, to go home, to bring multitasking. Um, yeah, I think the trackpad is something that I'm, wasn't expecting to be as impressed with, but overall, like 
so far I'm really loving it. The only gripe that I have is that it's really small. Uh, by small I mean narrow. It's pretty long. It's a lot longer than I thought it would be. But because it's so narrow, if I'm scrolling up on a web page or something, sometimes I'll like miss the trackpad and then I'll end up on like the space bar or something. Uh, nothing too big. I think it's something I'll get used to as I use this more. Functionality wise, like it has everything that you need for a keyboard. I say everything. It doesn't have a function row key, but whenever I'm looking at just how much is already fit onto this keyboard, I'm not really sure where a function key, function row would go. For example, if I have the iPad laid all the way out, um, if there were a function key here, it'd be behind the iPad. And if they move the keyboard down, uh, the trackpad would be even more narrow. So I'm not really sure how that would work. Uh, I posted about this on Twitter and somebody responded with how they could have made the number row, they could have added additional icons for those functions and then replaced the globe with a function key, which I think that's a good idea, um, especially since there are no keys on the keyboard to help you control the keyboard brightness, volume, uh, media playback. Keys like that are things that you can find on the regular uh, Magic Keyboard and things that are included on things like the Logitech Keyboard that uh, that was released for the iPad Air. So Yeah, I'm not really sure why they didn't do that uh, I do notice that if I'm listening to music or something like I still have to either go to control center deposit or uh, physically adjust the volume like this Not that big of a deal, but just something that uh, is included on other products that aren't $300, so it's kind of a bummer that it's not included in this. There is a USB-C port on the side that supports pass-through charging. Um, it does charge the iPad a little bit slower than it would if you plugged it in through the regular connector, but it's something that I don't really mind. A lot of the time when I'm using my iPad, I'm at a desk or at my dining room table right now, and I have all of my chargers available, so I just plug it in whenever I need it. And just a side note on the pass-through charging, the only way that the Mac, just a side note on pass-through charging, I'm amazed at how you're able to charge your iPad using the keyboard through these three little dots that make up the smart connector. The last thing I wanted to touch on was the backlight keyboard. It uses the iPad sensors to adjust the brightness automatically, and unfortunately there's no way to do this manually unless you go into the settings within the iPad and adjust the settings that way. Overall, I'm glad that there's backlit keyboards, but I wish we had a different way of adjusting it. Overall though, I'm very impressed with how this keyboard was built. It's very sturdy and it definitely gives you that desktop feeling. However, I think there's still things that need to be done on the iPad itself before you can get a desktop-like experience. My name is Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.